Hey, Justin Christensen here from Conversion Fanatics, and today let's talk about statistical significance, and more importantly, does it actually matter? Well, the short answer is yes, statistical significance matters quite a bit. Um, let me give you a quick example of that. So say you're running an experiment, and you um, show maybe 30% improvement, and you think magically after a few days, maybe it's ran to 80% confidence or something like that. And you think, okay, yeah, we got a winner. We've got a 30% improvement. You push that uh, as your new control and magically your conversions did not improve. Or maybe they uh, went down over a period of time. Of course, there's many different factors in there. You know, traffic spikes, um, different times of the week, different times of the year. But you are more likely to get false positives or lead yourself down the wrong path if you're not running uh, A-B tests out to statistical significance. A good example of this as well is we had a test that was showing uh, it was losing by about 25% for a period of time and the longer we let it run and the more and bigger sample size that we got, it actually started trending in the other direction and ended up winning by over about 16% with over 97% statistical confidence. Now, we would if we would have just taken that at face value and said, oh yeah, this is losing, it's not gonna end up winning. Well, we ended up with a big winner all because we let it run out to statistical confidence or statistical significance. Now, the problem with this calculation is many different softwares out there calculate it differently. Some are very liberal in their you know, calculations, some are a little bit more conservative. So what we recommend is always doing a secondary calculation, and there's plenty of these that you can actually look up online. Uh, you know, search for VWO or Convert has one, Optimizely has one, um, and run it out and put in your specific scenario to see how close you actually are to statistical confidence. Um, so you're not leading yourself down the wrong path. Now, the other side of that coin is not all tests are going to reach statistical confidence no matter how much traffic that you pour on them. You know, you could run millions of visitors through something and just how the conversions fall, what you're testing, how you're testing it uh, could have a big impact on the actual overall results of the experiment. So one thing that we do is always look for at least 50 conversions per variation and look at the sample size of the actual unique visitors that are showing in that test, along with the trends in the data. If it's constantly going up and down, you may wanna run it a little bit longer. If it's um, you know just slightly increased and then slightly decreased and just bouncing back and forth and almost dead even, chances of that actually being a statistically confident improvement or even um, you know a negative impact are slim to none. So what we recommend is generally cut that test early and then move on to something that can be a little bit more impactful or something else on your experiment plan or another hypothesis that you've created. But try to run them out to at least 95% statistical confidence whenever possible. Run them for a full calendar week, get a big sample size, uh, get 50 conversions per variation. Try not to test you know, A, B, C, D, E, F type tests, try to stick to maybe A, B or A, B, C type tests um, so you can get bigger and more impactful results and learn a lot quicker than if you were running, say, a 12-way uh, test or something along those lines. So try to run it out to statistical confidence, do secondary calculations to see, watch for trends in the data, get a big enough sample size, and lead yourself down the right path of improving your marketing results. So that's all I've got for today. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and we'll talk to you again on another video. Thanks.